Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, it's okay. I'm really glad that you're here and you're spending this time with me. Today we're going to speak about uh, living sacrifice. Uh, the Lord has so much to say about that, uh, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video together today. Uh, we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know not my words, but your words, Lord, not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I know that life is hard sometimes. Uh, you could be doing really well and um, having a great day ahead, and then all of a sudden something could fall or something could happen, and uh, it can be, you know, pretty upsetting. Uh, but I want to encourage you to remember that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are also in a broken world. And the Lord asks us to do the best that we can with what we have each and every moment. But he also gives us wonderful opportunities to grow. And we're not perfect and we're not expected to be perfect. And when we knew, know better, we do better. So the hope is that uh, the Lord will bless us in ways that he gives us wonderful things and helps us to have these incredible experiences, but he also blesses us when we have trials and tribulations and struggles, because that really gives us an opportunity to pick up our own cross and follow him. So today I feel like what the Lord put on my heart to speak about is living sacrifice. You know, uh, the Lord is has been with us at all times, always. And I think about, and I so appreciate the Jewish people, um, the Israelites, who followed incredible Abba Father that we have today. And if you read through the Bible, uh, there's a chapter in the Old Testament called Leviticus. There's 27 uh, chapters in that book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. And it is a really challenging book to read. Um, I love it because it's all about offering uh, sacrifices to the Lord. It's really about, you know, repenting to taking a, taking a moment to take a step back and pause and really feel and see and know what it is that we've done wrong and ask the Lord to change our heart. And so in the book of Leviticus, the priests, Moses and Aaron and Aaron's sons were called to be priests and they sacrificed often. Uh, they wore certain outfits um, and they were uh, considered to be the holy priests that can offer the sacrifices. And when I read through Leviticus, sometimes I have to kind of read like this, you know, sort of like with one eye open and sort of guarded because it can be really graphic about uh, some of the sacrifices. You know, they sacrifice bulls and goats and um, birds and all different animals for different reasons. But the purpose was really to... Uh, establish this relationship with the Lord, our wonderful Abba Father, and to, uh, to offer sacrifices to the Lord so that he knew that we were so sorry for our sins. So there would be sin offerings and grain offerings, and there would be peace offerings. But it was all established as a rule, as a way of... Um, to just really, you know, reconcile with the Lord and let him know how sorry that the Israelites were. So this was an ongoing ceremony that would occur. The priests would sacrifice the animals for the the whole community because uh, they were sinners. And you know what? We're all sinners. Um, it just means that we're not perfect. We make mistakes. Just this morning, as my son was coming down the stairs and he was crashing everything because he was late for work, 
I felt my voice raise at him to stop doing that. Uh, so, you know, I don't like to raise my voice, but I look at that as, okay, this is an opportunity to grow. What can I do differently next time when he comes down the stairs? Maybe just continuing to offer up prayer. And I'm sure that, you know, by the end of the day, um, my son will be remorseful for the way that he acted and we will both, you know, be able to apologize and say that we're sorry. But these are the things that just kind of come out of the blue every once in a while. So um, what I want to talk about today, what I feel like the Lord is putting on my heart is as wonderful as it was for these holy priests in Leviticus to offer up all these sacrifices, our wonderful Lord Jesus offered his own body up as a sacrifice to God for all of our sins. We talk about that at all times, right? When when we think about how the Lord, our wonderful Lord Jesus, uh, was just such a beautiful perfect, holy lamb. There was no sin in him whatsoever. But because we were sinners, he was willing to carry his cross in Calvary and be nailed to a cross. And he took on all of our sins. And since he did that, we no longer need to sacrifice animals or do any other sacrifices in the old traditional way in Leviticus because our wonderful Lord Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. But what we're asked to do is to take a moment, to take a pause, to take a step back, and to remember all that our wonderful Lord Jesus did for us. So prepare your heart as we go over these verses. Um, I feel like uh, particularly what we're going to go over today is Romans 8, 1 through 11. And we're going to go through it very slowly so that we can have some pause for reflection and really feel incredible awe and appreciation for all that our wonderful Lord Jesus did for us. And we're talking about a living life in the spirit. As we've mentioned so many times, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we live in a body. We have so much to take care of. And the body in itself is not sinful. The body is beautiful, just as our soul is beautiful and our spirit is beautiful, but it depends on what our mindset is. Um, so we really want to learn and grow from all our mistakes, from all our sins. And he invites us to repent and to follow him a little bit more closely. So I just want to encourage you to think about your life circumstances as we go through this and see where it is that you can choose to live in the spirit and surrender the sin, surrender the flesh. So we'll start off again, uh, Romans chapter eight, verses one through 11. We'll start off with verse one, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So remember that the Lord is not condemning us. The Lord wants us to repent. He wants us to see the errors of our ways and see what it is that we have done wrong and then offer that sin unto him, unto his beautiful body, unto the cross as he suffered um, for all of our sins. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free. So as he gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice, he is setting us free because we can follow him. From the law of sin and death, so we no longer need to sacrifice animals as they did in Leviticus. We can remember how our wonderful Lord Jesus took on all of our sins. He was the ultimate sin offering for us. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering for us. 
and so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So he wants us to renew our spirits. He wants us to surrender our flesh and our fleshly ways and the ways that we're not making good choices and take a pause, take a step back and really see what it is that we're doing. Each and every moment, we have a choice. Are we following our wonderful Lord? Are we being in the spirit that he has created us to be? Are we making good choices? Are we learning from our mistakes and moving forward? Or are we choosing to uh, not really care and follow our flesh? Each and every moment, we have that opportunity to make that choice. So picking up with verse five, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. So the desires of the spirit are very different than the desires of the flesh. When we live in our spirit, Sometimes it's really hard in the moment, but the payoff is amazing later on. We feel so much better. When we live in the flesh, we may be giving in to immediate gratification, and then we feel really awful later. Uh, let's see, all right. So um, picking up with verse six, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life, and peace. Doesn't it feel so good to feel alive, to feel peaceful, to feel calm, to feel relaxed? The mind governed by the flesh is hostile towards God. So when we're living in our flesh, we're really not following the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. But when we are following the Spirit, we are inviting that Holy Spirit, that beautiful Holy Spirit into our heart to be with us, to guide our footsteps, to help us to know the errors of our ways and to make better choices. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile towards God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of flesh cannot please God. It's kind of um, counter, you know, countercultural at times when we are in this world and we're seeing people doing things that are very much in their flesh. Um, it's not a judgment thing. It's not a conviction thing. It's just to see that sometimes when we're in the world, we're seeing worldly things happening. And we're encouraged to remember that we are indeed in this world, but we're not of this world. We're encouraged to take a step back, to pause, to see how it is that the Lord is working in our own lives. And we can do that by being quiet and still, by breathing slowly and deeply, maybe even just repeating, you know, beautiful sacred words, Abba, Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, and just feeling um, his presence. We can also do that by holding up a cross, by holding on to that cross, by remembering that he's with us at all times always, and all we need to do is to call him into our heart. We can do that by soaking in his wonderful Bible, his basic instructions before leaving earth that teaches us how to prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits to fully and completely align with his Holy Spirit. Picking up with verse 9, you, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of spirit. So remember now, our wonderful Lord took on all of our sins. He sacrificed for us 
because he loves us that much. So he's inviting us to follow him. Everyone can follow him. All we need to do is to just say that we're sorry for what we've done wrong, to truly repent, to shift our hearts and follow him and ask him to help us in all our circumstances. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life. When we live in the spirit, it feels so good. It vibrates at such a higher frequency. We can see and feel our wonderful Lord, in all our circumstances, we can experience compassion and love and understanding. We can invite him to grow all our fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. He grows us. He grows our fruit of the Spirit when we make that choice to follow him and to be in the Spirit. The Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of whom was raised, uh, let's start over. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because his Spirit who lives in you so powerful so that very holy spirit that raised our wonderful lord jesus from death and he ascended he resurrected and he ascended that very spirit absolutely is living in us that incredible holy spirit is living in us and can help us with all our circumstances in our life wherever we go wherever we roam this is such a powerful contemplation. I encourage you to think about this and visit in your own journal time, your own reflection time to revisit Romans 8, 1 through 11 and read through it very slowly, verse by verse, and see what the Lord has to tell you about how it is that he's offered himself up as a living sacrifice for us. And he encourages us to offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice. So I'd like to go to a couple of more scriptures. Um, we'll go a little bit further down in Romans 12, 1, uh, where he says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So I ask you to think about how it is that you can offer yourself up as a living sacrifice. What might be some things that you can do in your life as you journey, as you go further down in your journey, as you live your day-to-day -day life? How is it that you can uh, extend love and support to those that uh, you meet? that anyone that may be suffering, how might it be that you can help them? How might it be that you can make this world a better place? It would be different for everyone, but I encourage you to take some time, take a step back, breathe, and be aware of what it is that the Lord is calling you to do each and every day. As we think about how the Lord was an incredible sacrifice for us and our sins, how can we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and live in the spirit that he has created us to be. In 1 Peter 2.15, it says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So he's inviting us all to be a holy priesthood. So beautiful as we look at 
how, you know, uh, the foreshadowing of Leviticus and how in those 27 chapters, those holy priests, Moses and Aaron and Aaron's son, how they offered up sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. They were the mediator between God and the people. And then when our wonderful Lord Jesus came along, how he humbled himself and offered himself up as an incredible living sacrifice for us so that he could be that mediator for us between Abba Father and us. And we're being asked, all of us, to be in our spirit, to follow him, and to take on the role of a holy priest. What would you do differently in your life if you were a holy priest? How would you live your life? How could you surrender your flesh and live more in your spirit? I can almost guarantee you it will make you feel so much better. The spirit is full of light, love, grace, mercy, and peace. It's full of God's anointing. Uh, it vibrates at such a beautiful high frequency as we talk about that zero to 10 scale. The spirit is higher and higher levels. I encourage you to think about that. Each and every moment we have a choice. Do we want to live in our spirit or do we want to live in our flesh? I really hope that you join me in the choice of living in the spirit and then following through as being a living sacrifice to our wonderful Lord in your day-to-day -day life. Invite the Holy Spirit to come into your heart to be with you and help you with all the ways that you can shift your focus off of your flesh and into the spirit that our wonderful Lord has created you to be. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day and I ask that you please pray for me. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a nurse, a clinical pastoral counselor, a therapist, and a life coach. I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3, the number three, at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.